Hello everyone, welcome to Great Ones, and okay, after Tal, it will probably be interesting to go to maybe the exact opposite. I, I actually really think that Petrosian represent the exact opposite of Tal in many ways. Um, the, solid, the great, if Tal is the greatest attacking player of all time, let's just take it from that angle. If Tal is the greatest or considered greatest attacking player of all time, I believe Petrosian is considered the greatest defender of all time. Um, and that is not being said by me. That is being said by, well, let's take Kramnik, for example. We can, I, I, I'm quoting, we can call Petrosian the first defender with a capital D. He was the first person to demonstrate that it is possible to defend virtually every position. Petrosian contributed a defensive element to chess, an element that is being developed more and more today. Yes, today we know so much how people get a little bit worse endgame and just know I'm going to make it, or middle game, I'm just going to make a draw. You know, those Kramni, Kanand, and all those people. Yeah, they're a tiny worse, but they are so strong. They understand, okay, that's going to be a draw. On the other hand, it is interesting to read what Karpov saying about Petrosian. Again, I'm quoting. Petrosian was able to make, to make combinations no, no worse than Tal, but he restrained his talent and played purely positional. Petrosian himself said something uh, very similar. He, well, said something not very similar, but in that word. They say my chess games should be more interesting. I could be more interesting and also lose. That's, that was said by Tigran Petrosian and many, many more things. So basically, it was about the pieces connecting, defensive, thinking so much about, well, what is healthy in the position, being so deep. Everyone, everyone that I read, from Kasparov to Karpov, Kramnik and others, speaking about Petrosian, say it was, it was one of the deepest players ever. I think he has a record that was not, that is not matched by anyone. He was a part, he was part of the world championship cycle for 10 occasions in a row. 10. He played in the, can he was part of the candidates in 1953, 56, 59, 62. Then he won the world championship, 63. He was you know, challenger winning world championship. 66, defending the world championship. 69, losing the world championship. 71, again a candidate. 74, a candidate. 77, a candidate. 80, a candidate. Oh my gosh, I mean, if you actually include the matches, it's actually 11. That is, that is incredible. Just incredible. Well, the, the match he won should be part of the candidate. So 10 times over 30 years. I don't think anyone match that record. Anyone. Kasparov, okay, was, let's say, world champion about 20 years. Karpov, even less. Ten consecutive candidates. I guess that's what says a lot about the style. Speaking about Petrosian, he had big hearing difficulties starting when he was a young kid and suffered actually from, well, quite, quite difficult childhood, from sweeping the streets after his father passed away in, well, died in World War II, so maybe that also somewhat helped to his really tough style. Born in 1929, he started excelling at chess, I would say at the age of 12, and became strong, stronger, strong, winning Armenian championship by the age of 17, playing a really unsuccessful uh, Soviet championship in 1949. I believe he lost the first five games, if I'm not mistaken. But... At that year, he moved to Moscow, and by 1951, he already took second in the Soviet Union Championship behind Karras, if I remember correctly.